guys welcome to uh, car studio in today's video we're going to be unboxing and reviewing slash installing uh, K-Sport coilovers on my 2004 BMW E60 uh, I've already got my wheels on and I've got spacers on the rear for what I think uh, it's going to take to make the the fitment just right and um, yeah again this video today is about K-Sport coilovers I've, I've never bought any and um, I think they're kind of new to the market so I wanted to get some and uh, get them on my car and see, you know, what the quality was like. And um, they are an affiliate. I do have an affiliate link. So if you've been thinking about buying these and you like this video, uh, it would help me tremendously if you follow my affiliate link when you purchase yours. I would greatly appreciate that. So without further ado, let's get these unboxed. Um, First uh, impressions, uh, the quality seems to be there. Um, the materials seem pretty decent. But we honestly won't know until we get them uh, mounted on the car. So let's do that and then take it for a spin. So naturally we're doing the rear first because it's easiest. Um, the bottom bolt here is an 18 millimeter. We're gonna break that loose. After we do the top, which is just three um, 13 millimeter nuts right on top of the strut housing. And uh, you just have to remove the interior of the trunk here. Just the panels pop out, a couple clips. Uh, very easy and straightforward process. So um, we've got all the bolts out, but actually getting it out of the way is another story. So we're gonna move this sway bar link so the con uh, control arm will fall down more. We still gotta go like three inches. You serious? Yep. All right, holy crap guys, this is ridiculous. So we've just been struggling for like an hour. Uh, while it only took two tools to unbolt the old uh, strut, it took all of these tools to remove uh, the fender liner and the sway bar in link and um, we had to loosen up the, the EVAP canister. Uh, it was a headache, like it was so close to coming out. So um, what we found out the best method was is to um, you probably don't have to do the sway bar in link. We're gonna try not to do that on the other side. Uh, the biggest thing is just the fender liner. Cause the fender liner, uh, there's a big gap between the fender liner and the strut housing. So with the fender liner out, the top has enough room. With someone standing and like bouncing on the caliper to make the A-arm go down. Uh, there's just enough room with the fender liner out and the EVAP canister um, unbolted to where you can just wiggle it out barely and uh, that'll save you guys a lot of time. Hopefully it doesn't take us that long on the other side, but like I said, we had the old one unbolted in about 10 minutes and it took an hour to get it on the ground. And you can see the difference in the size here. So the new one will go in no problem. There'll be plenty of room. All right guys, so the reinstall was uh, way easier. It's like three inches shorter than the original strut. And um, I like the adjustment so far, you just, twist the uh, body of the coil over um, for ride height and then you use your spanner wrenches up here for, to adjust the um, spring rate. Um, I, I did have, I'm at the top of the threads for the spring rate. I can't go any um, stiffer so I hope uh, this is where it needs to be. And any more soft I'd have to um, raise the ride height which I don't want to do. So we'll just have to test drive it, see how it does. All right, so real quick on the passenger side, 
or the driver's side, it was super easy. So we were uh, working way too hard on the passenger side. Um, all that's required is to loosen or to remove the uh, three 13 millimeter nuts I showed earlier on the top of the strut and the 18 millimeter uh, bolt that holds the bottom and then uh, the inner fender well which is a bunch of eight millimeter uh, screws and then two 10 millimeter uh, nylocks uh, nuts and and then it fall literally it fell out so driver's side is way easier the key to this is removing the inner fender well and we didn't mess with the sway bar in link or um, anything on this side it literally took us like 15 minutes All right guys, we just got the uh, driver's side out and it really wasn't too bad. Um, first thing you would need to do is with a jack under the uh, spindle uh, to hold it up, loosen your center nut here on your strut. Um, it was a 21 millimeter. And once you do that, um, be careful, just lower your jack slowly and that'll take the pressure off the coil spring. You gotta remove the coil spring in order to get the um, strut to clear the fender. And you also gotta loose, um, remove all these lines from the bracket. And once you do that, uh, then you can easily get to the bolt that holds your lock collar. Also remove the bolt that holds the bracket for your soy bar in link. And then what we did, uh, you can see right before this, uh, we used a pry bar to hold uh, pry up against the strut from the bottom and we used an air hammer uh, to hammer this down and uh, honestly we figured out that the pry bar wasn't doing anything just the um, air hammer alone the vibrations was working it, its way out and uh, also we took an air chisel and kind of wedged in between here on the locking collar and that uh, you know helped spread it out and we, uh, my WD-40 can was empty, so we didn't have any penetrating oil, but I definitely would use that before you start this process. But uh, yeah, the driver's side, now it's just as simple as putting it back together, uh, just a few bolts, not bad at all. And um, we got the passenger side left and we're done. All right guys, with the driver's side installed for the most part, I'm gonna just talk about adjustments real quick. With the damper adjustments up here, and uh, it makes a nice click feeling, lets you know exactly how many turns you're doing. And under here, you have, this adjusts your ride height, um, turning the whole coil, these threads, uh, you know, tighter will make it lower, and uh, loosening it will raise it up and what I did was I just started you know where I thought would be close and uh, put the car on the ground or you don't even have to put the car on the ground if you jack up the suspension you can see where your wheel is going to sit uh, in relation to the fender but um, first time it was way too high so then I just took a measuring tape and measured you know where I wanted my fender to sit on my tire and uh, right now I'm at about an inch and a half so I'm gonna go an inch and a half lower so I took my spanner wrench, uh, loosened this up, and I measured this as an inch and a half. And now all I do is turn this in until that collar, that locking collar, is flush with that, and that'll be an inch and a half. Um, as far as spring rate goes, that is these two adjustments right here. Well, they're not adjustments. This is your locking collar, and this is what you turn with your spanner wrench to uh, tighten your spring up. And that'll adjust uh, your spring rate, which is you know how uh, soft or hard the ride is if you're looking for really uh, flush um, you know tight fitment you uh, you want a, um, a harder spring rate and of course you would tighten that spanner nut up um, I'm not this is my daily so I'm not really going for that uh, I do want a uh, sort of flush look and um, right now I've got the spring rate way too tight my wheel was actually hitting these are 20 by nines 
um, plus 20 offset. So uh, with that offset, it is rubbing, it was rubbing the locking collars just a little bit. So I've got a 5 16 inch spacer, uh, that'll be plenty. And I don't know what millimeter that is off the top of my head. Uh, I just got it from the local parts store until I can order some uh, that's hub centric. But um, yeah, I'm gonna dial in this ride height on this side and then we'll get to the passenger side. And then we gotta readjust the rear because uh, the rear is way, way, way too low and uh, it's already rubbing just sitting here. So I'm probably gonna have to um, roll the fenders also and um, you know, we'll get to that in a little bit. All right guys, now that I kinda know what I'm doing, um, before we even start the passenger side, what we're gonna do is I've got the jack um, just a little bit up, the weight of the car is still on the suspension and we're going to remove this top bolt on the top hat of the stock strut and then when we jack the car up, it'll slowly release the tension. Um, by doing that, you won't have to mess with the tie rod end or uh, control arms or anything like that because the strut will come apart in pieces and it will give you enough room to uh, swing it out from under the fender. So uh, this, if you do it the way I'm doing it, it's pretty safe. You don't have to worry about coil spring compressors or getting killed. Um, like I said, the weight of the car is still on the spring, so we're just gonna remove this nut and then jack the car up slowly and that'll release the tension. All right, so uh, like I said, this method works so much better. Uh, we removed the top hat nut, 21 millimeter. We had to use a six millimeter Allen wrench um, on mine. You may not have to on yours. And if your struts are like mine, they're blown out, uh, they just fall down into the tube, that gives you plenty of clearance from the fender. Uh, you need to remove the lock, uh, the locking, the lock collar bolt and nut, um, and that'll take your brake hoses and um, ABS and brake wear sensors up out of the way. And right now, that right there is ready to hit with the air chisel and uh, get the old strut out. Before I get to that, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the new strut and um, what I did was on the driver's side, I measured my distance for the spring rate and I measured nine and a half inches from the top hat to the bottom uh, locking collar. And then there was only about two threads showing uh, between that and the ride height lock collar. And uh, while this isn't an exact, uh, you know, you're still gonna have to get it dialed in. This will get you very close and save you a bunch of time. Alright guys, this side was actually very easy. You saw how quick that came out. Uh, I am using an air hammer um, to just expedite the process. If you don't have one, uh, don't worry. You will need uh, some kind of chisel to knock down in, this, uh, in the split of this locking collar. Um, if, you don't have a, if you don't have some kind of wedge for this, um, I really don't see how you would get it out easily. You'd be here for a very long time. Um, but you saw what I did just now, I knocked the bolt out. Um, I just tapped in um, a, uh, an air chisel and then I used the air hammer to just the vibrations and me keeping tension on pulling up uh, made it slide right out. Now, before I install the coilover, and I highly recommend doing this, I've just got a wire wheel here. I'm gonna run it up and down the, uh, the inside of this real quick. Clean that up nice, and if you got some WD-40, it wouldn't hurt to spray a little bit in there, but I didn't have any issue uh, installing the new um, coilover in there. So now it's as easy as sliding the coilover in there and then bolting it up to the strut tower. Uh, this side was very simple. I didn't, re I didn't remove the sway bar end link like I did the other side or um, any control arms or tie rod ends, nothing like that. Uh, I think this method works the best. I mean, we're about 15 minutes in on this side and we're ready to reassemble floor facing out nice. And you won't hurt it by taking a rubber mallet and just tapping the top down in.
and I believe it's seated. I'm gonna give it a couple more love taps just to be safe. All right, now we put the bolt back in. Slides in just like that. Whatever you do, don't bolt the top hat in first. Uh, it would be almost impossible to get this perfectly aligned down into the uh, strut insert. So now uh, we need to get our jack and use and push this up in there. Jack out the suspension, bolt up all of our hoses and uh, wires right here, and then line it up with the strut uh, tower. guys first test drive uh, with the case port coilovers and I'm on uh, some back roads right now just because they're more rough I'm hitting some bumps and I gotta say I'm actually very impressed uh, the ride quality is excellent um, like I haven't really tuned in the suspension yet I've just got it all at the same uh, level and the same spring rate I haven't messed with the damper or anything yet uh, but it's really good I mean I'm hitting bumps um, there's no rubbing and uh, it doesn't jar you to death and um, I'd say overall I recommend these coilovers uh, the the quality was there um, in the construction it felt like uh, you know they were made of good quality materials and um, they were easy to adjust um, I'd be lying if I said they were easy to install uh, they kind of kicked my butt but that's why I made this video. So now you guys can see my trial and error and what worked for me and made the job way easier and so you can get it done way faster. All right guys, check it out. We got it on the ground. Got the shop uh, cleaned back up. I even hung my air hose uh, reel up here finally that I've had for months. I had basically half of my tools and half my shop torn apart for this and uh, I'm hoping that this video will help you guys out because it obviously didn't take that many tools to do this. Uh, I was just doing trial and error, and I think I figured out the best way to do it. And look at this thing on the ground. Holy, whoo, totally transformed this car. In my opinion, it looks so much better. An excellent daily driver. like this how-to video and you want to see more reviews and projects uh, follow car studio subscribe like it and turn on your notifications because I upload two to three times a week um, I didn't get any uploaded last week due to uh, the storm and just waiting on parts I didn't really have any content to upload but I have tons coming out this week so thank you guys for watching